Welcome to our new exhibit, which will be up until May 7th. And there are many parts to it, so it's going to take you a little while to get through this. And uh, lots of different things to enjoy, both on the humanity side and on the art side. Um, we are. We have the Smithsonian Traveling Exhibit, the Voices and Votes, Democracy in America, and that has lots of interactive pieces and lots to learn that's historic. Um, we also are uh, paying tribute to our local people, and one of which is Anna Howard Shaw, of course, and we have a large exhibit downstairs that the middle school, Big Rapids Middle School uh, students did uh, in honor of her. And as any part of the uh, Smithsonian, they really like us to try and create a community conversation. That's what the goal of these exhibits is. And so as part of that, we invited people to tell their stories. We call this Citizen Voices. And we have a lot of posters here that are showing the different um, experiences that people had uh, when they stood up and dissented. Uh, we also have pieces from the Museum of Sexist Objects at Ferris. And we have um, a project uh, on Ruth Bader Ginsburg that was done by uh, Ferris students as well. Another one of our local uh, pieces, uh, and if you may have noticed already that there, is an, there are three windows on Michigan Avenue that are um, housing uh, historic pieces either from the Ferris Archives or from the Macosta County Historical Museum. This came from the Historical Museum and this is the dress uh, worn by Ruth Lucas who was the very first woman to be elected to the Big Rapid City Commission. And then we also have an arts component that is the Ruth Gilmore Lang's Free the USA series. And this series of paintings she's been working on uh, for 20 years now. It was inspired uh, by her deep emotions that she had after uh, the 9-11 attack. And so for the last 20 years she's been adding to this. Uh, we have about 14 pieces. This one is 10 feet long. We have three 10 foot uh, pieces and then a bunch downstairs as well. And then another piece from the Ferris Archives that uh, is, is kind of a fun, uh, a fun thing to look at. Um, you're saying, what is that hunk of stone that's in, the, in this beautiful case that was created for us by Gallup Guitars? Uh, this is the stone that was from the State House. And this is a photograph of uh, Woodbridge Ferris's inauguration. And there it is right there. Hello, everyone. We're so glad that you're here for the Voices and Votes exhibit from the Smithsonian. We are so proud to be able to um, host this exhibit. This is really a remarkable exhibit, highlighting what it is um, and how we as a nation have come to be. So when you come into Artworks, you're going to come to the far side of the um, gift shop, and you're going to actually enter through the main gates of the Voices and Votes. Um, before you do that, grab on the right-hand side, there are some great... Uh, brochures that will guide you also through the exhibit. Um, great information to have a little bit later. Coming on in, um, there are five panels that are part of the exhibit and there are interactive things on both sides of the panels. Um, so make sure that you go all the way around them so that you have a chance to uh, see all the information. It might be a little bit much to begin with, but once you get into it, to understand what's going on. So we start right away with the beginning of the history and um, very interesting. You can see why uh, Great Britain was um, reluctant to let us with this, go on with this experiment. During that same time, they were colonizing globally as well. And so um, when we had this uprising of our founding fathers, it was really, um, it was something for them because here was this big vast land. They didn't really know how big it was, the land mass, but it wasn't um, what they wanted. They wanted to have everything. And so when our founding fathers went ahead and decided to say, hey, no, we, we want to be our own, our own country, it was really um, something that had never been done before. So come on in. I want to show you that there are wonderful interactive uh, pieces throughout the exhibit. Um, this is a great one. Okay, all these ideas were proposed. Drag the ones you think were accepted by the con. So states should be prohibited from creating their own money. And they said, 
So no, the proposal was accepted. So, and then it tells you why uh, money was, was not allowed to be there. So great interactive things going on. Check that part out. Um, I'm talking about who had the right to vote. And uh, then we come over here to this section, which is all about the right to vote. And <clears throat> interestingly enough, what's uh, this democracy was never intended, even though they said it was for all the people, it was never really um, intended to go that way. Um, technically, it was only uh, men who ha held property that they would be the ones voting for everyone. Well, as people realized what was going on, they're like, no, I have a voice. I want my voice to count. Last year, we celebrated the 100th year of the women's right to vote. And um, pretty remarkable that it took that long. Lots of women um, protested, uh, lobbied, did many, many things just to get us women, who are half the population, or maybe more, um, a, a chance to vote. And not only that, but, you know, um, the black population that was part of us, they were only considered three-fifths of a human being. I mean, it's remarkable that we even continue to exist. The beautiful part about learning about our history is that we are um, trying to form a more perfect union. Doesn't mean we're perfect yet. And that's why we need to keep going. Okay, I just wanna share with you uh, one of the quotes um, that we as docents have learned about, um, and it's from the late John Lewis. And he said, the vote is, a pre is precious. It is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have in a democratic society, and we must use it. And this is very um, relatable to what's going on today in uh, states like Georgia and Arizona and Florida taking away uh, the rights of folks to vote. And so um, we have a voice, we have a civic responsibility to do something with that vote. So um, moving around, we have um, some campaign issues and how the, the whole idea of campaigning and campaign buttons and um, bumper stickers and all that, that's all part of what we're learning here as well. Um, it is, it is remarkable that that didn't really be, that it, did, it started much earlier than I thought in the 1780s. Uh, that was one of the first things that happened is parties were uh, defined, political parties began, and that's when they started using imagery. And we're an art institution, and so it's interesting to me to see how artists have played a part throughout this entire process. It's a great uh, political cartoon, and it, it's the, the donkey and the, the um, elephant and they're both pointing fingers at each other and it's, it's comical to see but very interesting take on what is going on. This is another panel and this talks about um, the actual uh, behind the ballot and how that works and uh, some, of, some of that creating of a citizen. This is a great another interactive piece so um, there are different signs up here. You can actually touch the screen. These, si these signs will come up and for instance, so these are actual signs, protest signs, that were part of, a, uh, of um, a protest. And if you touch on, how about this one, I am a man, you touch on that, that will come up and then it will give you a history of where that originated. This was from 1968 down in Memphis, Tennessee, where the sanitation workers uh, were. So um, lots of things to see and, and come and, and learn about. One of the last panels that we have is uh, talking about how are you as a citizen living out what we have um, come to, to know as part of our history. So defining citizenship, what does it mean to you? This is a great little interactive to see if you could actually pass a U.S. citizenship test uh, question. So let's just pick one, name one U.S. territory. Uh, what do you think? Okay. I immediately thought, oh, well, Puerto Rico. Okay, and then it tells you Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Northern Mariana Islands, and Guam. So these are all just some examples of um, questions that are on the actual citizen, uh, U.S. citizenship test. 
In celebration of 100 years since the passage of the 19th Amendment, we know that middle schoolers learn best by doing and by having um, service learning and learning in action going on. And so we spent extensive amount of time, an extensive amount of time talking about the steps of the passage of the 19th Amendment and how that was, it was a long time coming, that process. Um, we have here a few students who st spent much of their own time time working on the murals. Um, our first mural is just really talking about how when the initial constitution was passed, we know that it was not equal, that um, women along with people of color were completely left out for having voting rights. And then of course the initial meeting at Seneca Falls with the Declaration of Sentiments. Um, we have the women who were instrumental in the initial kind of steps toward what was happening with the 19th Amendment, men and women, I should say. Um, and then, of course, the victory of the ratification of the 19th Amendment with the final passage in the, um, Tennessee. And then we also have one celebrating s several women who were instrumental to what has happened with the 19th Amendment and that we are excited about today. We're delighted to have the work of Ruth Gilmore Langs as part of this exhibit. Uh, it fits so nicely uh, with our democracy uh, theme. And Ruth began these paintings uh, in response to 9-11. And so it's been over 20 years that she's been creating uh, these abstract uh, pictures, and it's called Free, uh, the USA series. And so they're abstract maps of the United States, but they uh, evoke the emotions that she felt. And uh, in her artist statement, she talks about freedom and her interpretation of freedom. And that you can see, especially like in this one, there's a lot of joy. And she uh, recalls the various uh, icons kind of of her generation uh, that really spoke to that sense of freedom and the beauty of the United States. And so we see a lot of different interpretations here and um, they're, they all will you know, really speak to you. Hi, my name is Rachel Folk and I'm here to tell you a little bit about our Citizen Artist Exhibit. And this is an exhibit that we put out a call to artists to our community and asked uh, for our various artists to submit a work of art that they think engages with a political issue or a social issue, ecological issue, something that really matters to them as part of um, our larger democracy. And we invite you to come downstairs at Artworks and check out this exhibit. Um, and also to cast your vote. I'm standing next to the ballot box here. Um, we are doing a cash prize for the People's Choice Award, uh, and then we'll also have a judge's prize, uh, which I'm gonna be awarding. And you can come between now and April 21st to submit your ballot. So one of the works that our citizen artists um, have submitted is this work by Donna St. John, which is a tribute to Ruth Bader Ginsburg and you can see it's a very um, living, you know, a vivacious portrait. Um, and then we, have, of course, have some other pieces which are much more abstract, um, like this one that um, has been submitted by Susan Bates, uses fabric, but also a, a combination of fabrics to talk about the various demographics of the United States and also the representation of various groups within our government, within Congress. Um, we've got some pen and ink pieces, some drawings. Um, we've got a very bright blue um, work here by Barb Bazan um, that asks us to contemplate um, the Native American experience here in the United States. Um, another work here by Joyce Kappen, which asks us to consider borders and walls and fences, um, something of great concern these days. Um, and of course the exhibit actually continues over here and we've got two more works, uh, one that is three-dimensional uh, relief carving with um, birds, left and right wing, um, and then also a, a banner um, which asks us to choose love. 
So we invite you to come take a look at all of these pieces and cast your vote for the one you find most moving. Okay. Hello, my name is Tracy Bush and I am the lead faculty for the Museum of Sexist Objects and we worked uh, with people in the community to put this exhibit together called Voices and Votes from the Big Rapids perspective. So what we did was we asked people in the community who went to various uh, women's marches. So of course the first marches back in 2017. We have voices from Lansing, uh, people from this area who went to Washington DC and they're telling their stories. And one of the stories I'd like to highlight is by Kimberly Boswinkle, who organized a women's march actually in 2020 before the 2020 elections. We also have a student who went to the Handmaid's March in Lansing back in 2019. So a lot of different voices from many different people, professors, community members, people of color, and basically this is also not only uh, the voices of people who went on these marches, but also their artifacts. So as the lead faculty for the Museum of Sexist Objects, I'm responsible for gathering objects. And this is, you know, sexism is uh, an issue that's not just recent, it's ongoing. And, you know, it's not just a situation where it's happened back in history, back at the suffrage movement uh, and the passing, the long effort to pass the 19th Amendment, but, you know, it continues to go on to this day. So I think this exhibit catches that, that we're all still making history today. We are so very excited to be partnering with the Smithsonian again uh, for Voices and Votes. Uh, this is our third Smithsonian exhibit and uh, it is absolutely wonderful. So please come in and check it out. We are open Monday through Saturday uh, from 10 until 4. So we just uh, encourage you guys to come in and view it for yourselves. We have things in the upper gallery. We have so many pieces. We have things in the lower gallery as well. Some large pieces of art, some, some submissions, some stories. Uh, and a chance to tell your own. It's interactive kiosks and a lot of things that you can do. So we just encourage you to come in and enjoy our exhibit. Thank you.